hello there, April the 7th now, first week of April. What I'm going to do now is just uh, finish getting all of my uh, onion sets out. Um, so I've had a look at the weather forecast, there's no uh, risk of anything too bad in the weather. So uh, yeah, they're definitely ready to go out. I've got the rest of my white onions I didn't plant last time. And then that back tray is my red onions, the uh, red barren was it? So uh, these were grown from sets, so I'm just going to finish whacking them out now. Right, well I've just been walking around with the hoe, and I've got one very unwelcome visitor here. Look at that disgusting specimen. That is a mare's tail spore flower head thing, I suppose you'd call it. Um, those things come up and uh, spread millions of uh, spores, which is how the mare's tail, or horse tail, actually spreads. So I want to try and get rid of that. And then make sure that I dig out all of the roots underneath as well. Now this will root probably one to two metres deep, so you're never effectively going to get it all out. What you can do is just get as much of it as you can out, and when you start to see the heads poking up, just keep knocking them back. Any of you guys growing strawberries might notice that uh, a lot of them have got carried away with the recent warm weather and gone to flower. Now. You see how the centre of that has gone black? Sorry guys, but unfortunately that means that they've been frosted and there won't be any fruit coming from that one. Don't worry though, still plenty of time. As you can see, all the flowers on there have gone black in the centres. But, excuse the weeds, plenty more flower buds coming through. I do need to weed this bed quite badly. Well, it needs to be weeded quite well actually. But there's raspberries and all sorts starting to uh, sprout up there as well. And then my original rhubarb, again, sitting amongst the weeds. I'm sorry, I'll get round to it. They're really, really interesting plants. If you're interested in sort of plants. <laughs> it's like, almost like, it's come out all scrunched up and then it's like opening up. Like it's... Uh, inflating itself or something. And then the little ones look almost brain-like, don't they? All squidgled up. But then obviously there's enough material there that that will expand into a huge leaf. Rhubarb watch now. Um, I've noticed these. Now I'm hoping upon hope that these are normal and they'll burst open and have a leaf inside. But um, they all appear to have them, so I'm definitely hoping that they're not going to flower. Um, and they all seem to be at the same stage as well, sort of closed, so I can't even get any reassurance that they are going to open. I mean, this one here looks particularly like a flower head, I don't know. Answers on a postcard addressed to, is my rhubarb going to seed? That one seems to be alright though, doesn't it? So yes, and keep an eye on that one in the next couple of days. Another job that I want to get sorted out today is to get these broad beans outside. Uh, they've been probably in the greenhouse now, growing for the best part of five or six weeks. And as you can see, they're uh, coming on really well. Ooh. Now, I'm going to plant these out now. There's no chance of anything major in the way of a frost or anything like that in the next couple of days. These are fairly hardy anyway, so uh, they've been in the greenhouse. They're used to cold temperatures at night. So I think they'll be all right. What I've done is already put my canes in um, so I can plant up against them. They're not going to need support right this moment, but they will need support eventually. So better off getting the canes in now uh, so that I'm not jabbing them through the roots or anything like that later on. I think one problem I am going to have is the roots on these because I've only put them in these little pots. And as you can see, they've rooted through really well. So I'm going to try and get them out without too much damage. Might be easier said than done. Oh, I've got the majority of them out there, okay. Let's go ahead and whack the rest of these in.
and that's just uh, giving them a good watering in as well. The uh, reason for the watering in, obviously you're providing them with water, but secondly, you are also settling the soil around the roots. If you imagine there might be a lot of air pockets and all sorts, so drenching them with water just allows all the soil to settle, make sure that the roots are in contact with the compost. Boom. Sorry, Mr. Pigeon. Not this time. Yeah, it's just a bit of scaffold netting that I've uh, whacked over the top there. I don't know if I'll get any actual problems with them, but um, yeah, that's going to uh, make them think twice anyway. It's quite good actually, that scaffold netting. That's just sitting on top of the canes there, so pretty straightforward little setup. Boom, one yards exhibition. The two blueberries that I planted seem to be quite happy with their current location. We've got this one here, which is uh, something Latin or blue gold. <laughs> so it's not something Latin, I can't actually even begin to pronounce that. There you go, you can all have a go. And this one as well, which is called Patriot. Uh, slightly smaller, weaker looking uh, variety, but uh, not variety, you know what I mean, specimen. But. Um, yeah, I'm sure you'll get away. Given half a chance, you can still misbehave. So, uh, yeah, we're going to leave them to do their thing. They seem perfectly happy. This is one plant that uh, you see quite a lot of at this time of year. Green alkanet. I think a lot of people uh, sometimes get it confused for comfrey because it has got quite similar shaped leaves. So, Nick, you've laid down the sunflower challenge again, have you? Right, I don't know if any of you have heard of Nick's allotment diary, but uh, Nick, like me, is a YouTuber. He likes to show people his garden, um, but he also likes other people to uh, show him theirs. So this year he's put down the Sunflower Challenge. It's um, basically what it sounds like, really. You get, there's an award for the tallest sunflower, there's one for the one with the biggest head, and there is also one for the most unusual sunflower. That's an unusual way of saying sunflower, but you know, yeah, the most unusual, unusual sunflower. I'm struggling with that. Um, so, basically, to that end, I am uh, going to be putting a lot of sunflowers in. I've already said top end, the spare plot is going to be a big sunflower area for me. Um, south facing as well, so that'll be absolutely lovely. They'll get all the sun, plus all the blooms will be facing towards me. When I put them at the other end of the plot before, they were being ignorant and facing away from me because that's where the sun comes from. Anyway, I digress. First one that I am going to go for is uh, giant single. That's going to get me somewhere near maybe on me uh, me tallest. Uh, so I think they go up to about four or five meters. So fingers crossed on that one. I'm also going to do Titan. Now these ones I grew last year as well and they are huge plants and they do produce huge flower heads as well. So fingers crossed on that one. I've got Pacino Gold. This is a small multi-headed one as well. So hopefully these ones might fit into the unusual category maybe. You know if the flowers arrange themselves into like something unusual. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I've got Autumn Beauty. Now this is a multi-headed one. This does grow tall as well. These were about seven feet tall last year. But as you can see, you know, really sort of beautiful, sort of uh, coppery, rusty sort of colour flowers. Uh, multiple heads as well, so there's another nice one. Unusual, black magic sunflower. Um, yeah, just something a little bit different. I think these are multi-branching, multi-headed, dark maroon sunflowers. So there we go. And I have one ace in my hole. Pike's Peak. Now these things are uh, not uh, not the tallest, 4.6 metres tall. Not big enough though, isn't it, really, if they get anywhere near that. But if you want to see, the seeds on these things are ridiculous. I mean, look at the size. Whoa! You don't get many in a pack. <laughs> but look at the size of some of these seeds here. Woo, look at that, that's got to be a good 20 mil long. That's going on for an inch. That's mental. Apparently these have got huge heads, like massive, massive heads. So, there we go. I'm going to uh, whack a few of these in. 
So if I do want the biggest, boldest, nicest specimens, you've got to get them in early. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to probably start them off in some little square. One moment. These pots here. They're uh, bigger than the ones that I'd usually use. See what I mean? So you've got a bit of extra depth, a bit of extra girth. What I'll do is I'll plant two seeds in uh, to each pot. And then what I tend to do is remove the weakest one. Just because... Um, you know, if you don't get one germinate, then you've always got one left, and um, you know, it just seems to work out for me. So, I'm on to you, Nick. Go and check out his channel, anyway. He's alright, he's alright, better than me. <laughs> the lavender hid cut blue that I sowed last year. Now, I've seen a lot of lavender bushes in the garden centres, and they tend to be kind of quite small, squat little bushes. Now, uh, is there any sort of pruning that I need to do on these? Because they seem to be uh, just favouring one long stem. And I'm assuming that one needs to cut them down, but I don't know 100%. So if anyone's got any ideas on that, as you can see, they've just gone a bit, a bit lanky. I think they're healthy enough, but... Uh, huh. Okay, give you a quick look at the greenhouses at the moment. This uh, seed tray here, this half of it here, is my cabbages. As you can see they've gone past their uh, seed leaves, which is that one, they've got the first set of true leaves and they're just about pushing up their uh, second set of true leaves as well. Uh, the Brussels sprouts at the back there, they're uh, looking at a similar stage as well, both sown at the same time. I'm happy enough to leave them in these seed trays at the minute, just until uh, they're about ready to grow out. But uh, I'm happy with them, they've not gone leggy at all, so uh, yeah, they'll be alright. Moving over onto the shallots, I've never grown shallots before, I'll be honest with you, but uh, these are the ones from Wilco. Now, what I believe is you plant the one shallot, and you see here how you have many stems coming out of that one. Um, I think that they split, and each one of those stems sort of forms into its own bulb. So that's how you actually harvest your shallots. You don't. Uh, pull out the whole thing like an onion I guess, as they just sort of divide. Oh, huh, that's the plan anyway. Uh, I'll have to have a read up on when these are due to go outside, because I'll be honest, I do not know. Right, there's the lavender, so if you've got any feedback on that let me know please. Um, in here, what do we have? We have got a couple of the uh, globe artichokes that um, harvested the seeds from, I've not got any life out of that. There's a beautiful broom outside with the uh, big yellow flowers, so I took some of the seeds off that last year. And I do appear to have one little seedling. The uh, strawberries at the back, one well, of these been in now, probably three weeks or so. Um, there's a few failures in there. Um, let me see if I can focus in. See that one there, that seed's obviously just got mouldy. Some of the other ones here just sitting on the surface. But we do have some successes, some of them have germinated. Um, I don't know if it's down to the cold temperatures in here or not, but um, so we are getting signs of life out of a few of them. Uh, where are you? Down here, those two have started to uh, sprout up as well. So I'll keep my fingers crossed on those. Oh, 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 I've trapped my shallot. Ah. Oh, no, mate, I thought that was your lot. Shallot is sitting there. Sorry, awful. Right, moving over here. This is the second batch of brassicas that I've put in. Um, so I've got um, some kale, Nero de Toscana, some dwarf curly, some curly scarlet. That's a red cabbage, uh, calibos, uh, green sprouting broccoli, uh, cauliflowers, standard like calabrese broccoli. And then uh, some other cabbages at the back, and as you can see, they've started to sprout up as well. I've done my usual trick where I plant a couple in a cell, and then I'm going to thin them out to one a cell. It works for me. There's my globe artichokes that I bought from home. Um, I have ploughed ahead, and I've sown some uh, gherkins there. And I've put in one type of courgette. I know it's still a fairly bit early for me, but you know we'll see how they go. And then some cucumber telegraph as well, which I have sewn out here. Moving down, I've doing quite a few um, flowers this year. Absolutely uh, nothing to show in any of these pots here because I've only just put them in in the last couple of days. But um, what have we got? Hollyhock stock, 
uh, Chinese lanterns and schizanthus. Excuse me if I've got that one wrong. And then moving down into the bottom tray here, I have sewed some marigolds. Each one of those trays has got one uh, one marigold in. So um, oh, looks like something's been on the soil there, or not? Probably just me with me overzealous watering. And moving across, uh, got my Pikes Peak uh, sunflowers. No show there. Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak. That reminds me of an old computer game I used to play. Uh, they had a Pines Peak, which was like a racetrack out in America. Don't know if you've got any uh, relationship to it. Probably not. Uh, Titan sunflowers and giant single sunflowers. And um, then we got to peas at the back end here. Which uh, obviously they've only been in for two days, so there'll not be a lot of sign for them out of them yet. Moving around into the cluttered greener, definitely want to sort this one out. I feel like it's a bit of a waste of space. I want to clear it out before, because uh, I've just got this big pot thing here. So I just heard some growling behind me. Can you hear the. There's a donkey going crazy for it. And then there's two pigeons trying to get it on as well. Either that or they're looking down here at me newly planted broad beans. Yes, don't worry, I've put my guard on top of them there, look. Any good ideas for names for him? Something original like Percy the Pigeon, I'm guessing. Right, moving through into the uh, cluttered greenhouse. Yeah, like I say, I've got this big desk in here. It's kind of a bit of a waste of space. It was perfect when I was using this place as a shed, but now, you know, I've got a shed. So I'll clear all of this out if I can at some point. But, um, me autumn mammoth leeks, they seem to be coming out okay. They're one of the only leeks that have actually uh, germinated and done well so far. I also created onions, they've germinated really thickly actually and they're uh, coming on quite nicely. They're in a nice big deep pot here but um, it won't be long before I want to start uh, thinning those down a bit. Uh, me hyacinths have uh, finished but I let the foliage die back naturally, that puts goodness back into the bulb for next time. Uh, more flower seeds, seems to have gone a bit flower crazy, uh, but no so, no show in any of those. Teasel, now uh, I don't know if you've ever grown teasel, it's uh, probably seen more of a weed actually, isn't it? You get the tall, sort of spiky um, head on them, don't you? That you sometimes see in flower arrangements, things like that. Uh, down here, um, What's that? Godetta? <laughs> Don't ask. And in this one I've sewn some uh, Cosmos. That one's called Rosetta. They seem to be coming up quite nicely and amongst the vermiculite. Uh, Mesambrianthemum. Mesambrianthemum? I say they've started to germinate as well. I really do want to try and generate a bit of colour on the plot this year. And finally... Uh, Rudbeckia, Mom, uh, Marmalade? <laughs> Can't even tell what I've sewn. Um, and then if you have a look, you can actually see that they've started to sprout through as well. So yes, yeah, all good on the flower front. Not a heck of a lot on the edibles, I'll be honest. Um, the leek, what's this one called? Elephant. I've just pulled this out of the corner actually because I thought maybe it's suffering from uh, being in the dark. But um, not a heck of a lot happening there. And finally the Musselberg, which uh, again, they've come through but they don't appear to be doing a whole heck of a lot, so we shall see. And then elephant garlic as well, it's uh, a bit of a bizarre one. It's rooted, and then absolutely nothing on top. These have been in now for over a month, and uh, I'm not seeing any signs of life or sprouting out the tops. So, I don't know, maybe that's an elephant garlic thing. Maybe I've left it too late. Oh, who knows? I would dare to dream. Uh, fruit trees out here next to the uh, scruffy patch. Uh, that's Victoria plum. That's uh, sprouted to life. That was newly planted this year, so I'm happy about that. Uh, moving over, conference pear again. Seems to have come out. I don't know if the cold's affecting it. It's uh, sprouting plenty though. So, that one's definitely alive. The uh, Golden Delicious Apple is dead, that's a twig, I don't know if you can see but there's absolutely no life of anything in there and it actually looks, you know, really hard and dead. 
the first cherry tree that's budding back as well this one was here last year that's absolutely flying into life so that's lovely the second cherry again I believe that one's dead um, so I bought those ones from Tesco so it's not a, uh, a resounding good review for them the apple discovery again starting to burst into life as now as now you know what I mean as well now <laughs> And finally the cox, is this one the cox? It is the cox. As you can see there, that's started to blossom already. So hopefully I got a nice few uh, apples off that last year. So yes, uh, this year's fruit trees, two hits and two misses. So not the best. Hi. I do think that next week's going to be a very busy week down here on the plot because sort of mid-April, um, you know, I'm getting towards sort of three weeks from the first, you know, the end of the frost. So, um, I say I've sown quite a lot. I've got tomatoes at home. I've got, um, you know, things like my courgettes and everything like that on the go. Next week, I am going to look at um, getting my spuds out, my main crops. Which, um, yeah, you can do it earlier, but, you know, 16 weeks. So, you know, I'll still be harvesting at a decent time. Plus, I won't have to worry too much about them poking their heads up and getting frosted and getting knocked back. Uh, I'm also going to look at doing some outdoor direct sowing. Um, obviously everything that I've done so far has been in pots indoors. So the things that I will be looking at sowing outdoors. Radishes. They're not radishes. So the sort of things that I'm going to look at sowing direct. Um, straight into my beds. Beetroot. I'm going to sow some radishes. Of which I've got a lot. Um, I may try some little turnips as well because I always find that they grow quite well directly sown. Um, and they're also the quite, these are the, the small ones that you'd harvest when they're quite small. Uh, what are they called? Purple Top Milan, which you know, I've done them last year. They will grow big, but they're better off harvested small. Um, parsnips. Now, parsnips can be a bit of a pain to get to germinate. So, what I have done is I've got tender and true. And I've also got Gladiator F1. Now, I'll be sowing both of these, um, probably into the same trench, which um, is a technique that I learned from a guy called Jim on Jim's Allotment. I don't know if you've seen his channel. Check him out. He's a knowledgeable guy, more so than me. Um, and he'll sow two, maybe three types into the same row. Um, so if he's got one bad batch of seeds or one you know, variety doesn't want to germinate, there's always a backup plan and you don't end up with an empty row. So that's one thing that I did... Um, two years ago was it in my first year and it was brilliant I didn't do it last year and I didn't get any parsnips so I'm going back with this plan um, sweet corn um, I'll probably be starting those in pots for the greenhouse um, I don't know if it's a bit early should I do them now I could do them now to be fair if I had the time I'd do them now should I do them now I'm gonna throw some sweet corn anyway I digest um, and then also me carrots as well. So I've got a few different types of carrots here. Chantenay Red, Early Nance, uh, Nance 5, oh, sorry, that's Early Nance 2, Nance 5. Nance has got a lot of numbered carrots, hasn't it? Uh, early Nance 2, that's, uh, and then Royal Chantenay 3. So carrots, direct so at this time of year, give them a go. It's definitely worth it. This is going to seem like a bit of a random one, to be fair. But um, have you ever noticed little black spots? Sometimes you may find them uh, on a windowsill, or in this case here in the shed. I've often wondered what these are, and only recently have I found out. A spider poo. Who'd have thought it? Obviously, because it's there on the ledge, if you go up to the top, there'll be a spider in there somewhere, or there's been a spider's nest. That's its droppings. Who'd have known? Well, that's about it now for another day. Um, so there's only a quick visit down this weekend, but uh, I feel like I got plenty done. So you know, I'm happy enough with that. Onions, broad beans, garlic, lots of lots going off in the uh, what are they called grass green thing house. What's it? Yes. So um, yeah, that's me checking out. Thanks once again for joining me. And um, in the words of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, see you later.